Nine is a fun, visually unique, but narratively flawed movie with a lot of lost potential. Here's why, why it deserves better. Back in the early 2000s, a young animation student by the name of Shane Ackle was working on his thesis film at UCLA. The story he set out to animate was a simple one, the tale of a ragdoll trying to survive in a war-torn apocalyptic hellscape. So the actual process of making the short was anything but, the ordeal taking him four and a half years to finish. But this work would pay off in the end, as this simple student film would end up with an Academy Award nomination, which is a pretty monumental achievement, even though it lost to John Canemaker's The Moon and the Sun, an imagined conversation. And despite this loss, Nine's success would not end there, as it would catch the eye of Tim Burton, who was so impressed with the piece that he would, along with producer Timur Bekmambetov, help Acker expand it into a feature. And watching the short, it is easy to see why, as besides these stylistic elements which would obviously appeal to someone like Burton, the film showcased a talent for visual storytelling and aesthetic sensibility. Take the animation acting for example. The film is bereft of dialogue, so Acker had to make his characters expressive through their actions and movements. Something which he achieved well in this scene, with the relationship between the two ragdolls is quite clear, the one numbered 5 acting as father or mentor figure to the one numbered 9. So with a budget of 30 million dollars, Acker sat to work on his first feature, beginning with the story. The short's narrative is simple, the titular 9 evades a cat robot, beats it, gets this magic thing and frees the souls of his comrades trapped within. The film maintains some of these elements, but Acker would expand upon the original idea significantly, helped by screenwriter Pamela Petler, who had previously worked on scripts for animated films such as Tim Burton's Course Bride and Monster House, both children's films with a darker edge, so it's easy to see why she would be a good fit for the project. So, what was at first a rather minimalistic tale was upsized, the previously unexplained world given a history, the cast of characters increased by about fivefold, and what used to be a 10 minute short was stretched to an hour and 20 minutes. The animation would get a major upgrade as well. The short is impressive, especially considering that Acker made most of it on his own, but there was a lot to improve upon, not the least of which was the expressiveness of the characters and the textures. With the increase in budget and personnel, the ones where the bland and stilted looking characters were given more defined personalities and greater range of expressiveness. And the PlayStation 2 cutscene looking graphics of the short were upgraded to PlayStation 3 looking cutscenes, the texture of things like the ground not looking as flat as they did in the short. They were also able to add more detail to the world and characters, like how each individual ragdoll has a more defined personality shown only through their apparel. Number 1 having a regal appearance with his pope black getup, number 6 given an eccentric feel with his ragged hair, striped body and chained collar and so on and so on. And what's cool about their designs is how everyday objects are incorporated into them, like number 7's bird skull helmet, number 8's kitchen knife sword and number 2's light bulb hat. Their designers having thought about what kind of objects these characters might be able to scavenge to make their getup. I also love how the ragdolls get progressively more sophisticated the newer they get, the first of them number 1 being way rougher than the final product, number 9, everything from the hands to a sack body being an upgrade on the original, showing that the scientists who made them got better with each one. The same level of detail went into the world building, even before the expository sequence where its lore is explained there's a definite sense of history to the film's world, the fascistic propaganda posters and the resistance flyers giving a lot of hints as to what might have caused its destruction. Though no discussion of Nine's aesthetics can go without mentioning the film's robot monsters, who are probably the best it has to offer. The cat robot is back, only now it is even more terrifying thanks to improvements in its motion. And along with that there is this pterodactyl thing, which features in the film's best action set piece. And of course my favorite of the three, this weird amalgam of a snake, centipede and a spider, which even though I'm well past the age this movie was intended for, still freaks me out. Probably due to it being a mixture of some of the creepiest animals found on earth, its macabre doll head and the fact that it puppeteers one of the character's corpse. Now there are a few shortcomings to the visuals. The ragdolls look like obvious CGI models, their cloth texture is feeling kind of flat. But other than that, the film is a marvel to look at. Even though more than 10 years have passed, the film's strong art design is saving it from becoming outdated. But there is another problem. The art design is about the only thing I can praise this movie for, as its story is what really drags it down. Quick summary, a ragdoll with a number 9 written on his back wakes up in an apocalyptic wasteland with no knowledge or memory of what has happened. He meets up with others of his kind, gets chased by a cat robot, accidentally wakes up the film's main antagonist and has to spend the rest of the movie figuring out how to shut it down, all while discovering why he was made. It's a decent enough concept, the central mystery helping to keep the audience engaged, but it's dragged down by the lacking characters. The nine ragdolls either have shallow personalities or none at all, 
Characters like number 1, number 3, number 4, number 5, number 6 and number 8 can be reduced to about 2 traits. Number 1 is a coward, number 3 and 4 are weird and childlike, number 5 has self-esteem issues, number 6 is also weird and number 8 is big and brutish. Now, in some cases, their voice actors do add some to their characters. Christopher Plummer is perfect as number 1 and John C. Reilly has a voice that makes number 5 easy to feel sympathy for. And for all the characters listed above, they at least have character traits. Same cannot be said for the other three. Number two is supposed to be an inventor and a father figure I guess, but his screen time is so low that it's hard to pinpoint exactly what his character is. And number seven is, well, she's the girl one. Her character is that she's the token female and I guess a girl boss or something. But worst of all is number nine, whose character is that he's a blank slate. I am aware that a lot of stories have bland main characters that essentially serve as audience proxies, but at least in some of these stories, the protagonists have a modicum of definable character traits. Nine, nine is less a character and more of a dump truck for exposition and world building, therefore the audience to project onto and experience the world through. And in the case of number seven and nine, their voice actors do not offer much, both Jennifer Connelly and Elijah Wood giving bland performances to the bland characters. But beyond the characters, the story falters in several other ways, not the least of which is this scene, where nine accidentally awakens the film's antagonists. It's a very frustrating moment due to how forced it is, as there is very little good reason for Nine to so blindly put the amulet thing he has onto the machine without even thinking about it. You could say that it was part of his character, that maybe he was overeager or brash, but just as I said before, Nine has very little character to begin with, so the only justification for this moment is that the story would not have moved forward without it. Though where it falters the most is the main character's lack of an arc. Look at number 9's character in the film's beginning and then its end, there is no visible change. Yes, he does discover the truth about his creation and his purpose, but the discovery is not the same as development. There is no indication that the revelation he receives at the film's end changes him in any way, except in that he now knows how to defeat the main antagonist. In fact, the only character who goes through any development is number 1, beginning as crotchety and cowardly, after leaving people to die to save his own skin, then ending up sacrificing himself during the film's climax. There are a few positives, I like how many of the ragdolls die in this film, and not in the way that a lot of other animated films kill off a character when it happens off screen or they fall to their death so you don't really see it. No, they get their soul sucked out, which despite the lack of blood or gore is still quite horrifying. And the film does sport some great action set pieces, such as the aforementioned fight with the pterodactyl robot, or the one with the snake centipede spider thing, both notable for the creative ways the characters defeat each of the robotic monsters. But when it comes to the heart of the story, its characters and their journey, it sadly falters, making Nine a great visual and art design showcase with a lacking narrative. And unfortunately for the film and its director, the visuals and the art design was not enough to save it. Upon release, it did make more than its budget, but not enough to make it a hit, and it was only nominated for nine rather minor awards, none of which it won. Possibly due to this, no studio had much confidence in Shane Acker's viability as a director, as he has not directed a feature film since. He did make another short called Plus Minus a year after Nine's release, which to the best of my knowledge is not available anywhere, but since then he has had nothing but a string of cancelled projects, like a children's film called Thomas and Friends which would have seen Acker make his debut in live action, and an animated film he was supposed to be making with the video game developer Valve, which like a lot of other Valve projects is likely not to see the light of day, though recently he made another animated short titled Crusoe, which at the making of this video is currently in the film festival circuit and has won an award for best sci-fi short at the Berlin Short Film Festival. And I really hope something good comes out of it, as when I watch Nine, what I see besides the fantastic visuals and lackluster story is potential. Lost potential, yes, but potential nonetheless. And it's kind of a shame that Acker has not gotten the chance to realize it. Yes, the film is flawed, but so are most directors' debuts. I mean, look at Hayao Miyazaki's first film, The Castle of Cagliostro. It's a fun adventure film with some great and energetic animation, but it has a lot of story problems, and is a far cry from his later films. Now, I am not saying that Shane Acker would have become as great as Miyazaki, but I am saying that if he had got another chance at feature filmmaking, he could have made something good, perhaps even great. Maybe, with the right script, he might even have a masterpiece in him. Who's to say? Yes, directors do sometimes get worse with their later works, but sometimes they get better and Shane Acker never got a chance to go either way, so here's hoping we'll get something more from him, as even though it has numerous faults, I still think 9 is a film worth viewing and discussing.